It is Daisy and Alex back for a YouTube video. And today's video is going to be all about comparing HB pencils. The video is inspired by a blog post that Alex recently wrote for our Yoseka blog where she took a bunch of different HB pencils and compared them across different brands. And I think that it solves a lot of the mystery around some pencils. Alex wrote this beautiful blog post for us, which I highly recommend, and you all should go read it if you have questions about pencils. But before we dive into the video, Alex, can you tell us a little bit about like why you love pencils i mean like i feel like since the beginning of your time at yoseka you've always you've been the pencil person right so my art background i started a lot in graphite drawing just straight pencil drawing and that's also with like just the mechanical pencils i had for school the school pencils i had most of my most of my pencils. drawings were in graphite pencil like gotcha. detailed graphite um so that's where that kind of started and accumulated from and then as i went through art school I got more into different colored pencils. I was an illustration major, so kind of like branching out on that. But like graphite standard pencil is like where I started and what I still love to do and mm. what I still love to sketch with. So I always have one or more than one. <laughs> you have this section in your blog post called Pencil 101, which I think is a great breakdown of just like the top things you need to know about pencils, starting with like, what is this lead? What is this graphite inside inside pencils? So yeah. as I, as you probably noticed, as I just said, I refer to them as graphite pencils. It's just what I think of, but most commonly like we call it a lead pencil, wooden lead pencil. There is no lead actually in them anymore. Obviously it started that way a very, very long time ago. Um, but now most of the cores are made from a mix of graphite and clay. And that mixture varies between different pencil manufacturers, which is what makes each pencil different from each other and what makes each lead hardness different from each other. Mm -hmm. But really the main core of the pencil, your graphite core is made from graphite and clay, which mm -hmm. is then mixed with water multiple times and then let dry and then heat, heat it to a very, very high temperature. And that's hmm. what gets put inside your wood. I see, okay. So what differences, like what differences occur if there's different ratios of graphite to clay? So the more clay you have in a lead pencil, graphite pencil, the harder the lead will be. It makes it a harder like inside core and you'll get lighter lines. Mm. The more graphite you have in a pencil, the softer the lead will be and that gives you like the bolder black lines. Mm. Okay, that's super helpful. So pencils often have like this number on them too, right? Like we've all heard of like the number two pencils that you're required to have as a kid. But even beyond that, like we do have a lot of pencils in store that will be HB or B or 2B. Um, there's like even like 10B, 5H, like all these numbers. What do those numbers mean? Yeah. So your standard number two pencil is HB. Mm -hmm. That's why I picked it for this blog post. And then when you go to either side is how hard or soft your lead will be. Mm. So 10H or any high number H is going to be a very hard lead. It gives you a very light line. And then 10B or any higher number B is actually stands for black. I think of it as bold, just in case that helps anybody. Um, and it gives you a much darker line, a much softer lead. So here on the table in front of us, we have the Mitsubishi High Uni pencils that span all the way from 10B on this side. You can see most pencils have the hardness indicated um, towards the top of the pencil there. So this here is a 10B pencil. So this would be the softest pencil, right yes. Alex? Yes. And then all the way on the other side of the scale, we have a 10H pencil, H for hard. So 10H would be harder than just 2H, right? Yes. So this is like all the way on the other side of the hardness scale. So we have 10B and 10H as like the two softest and hardest pencils. And like this, the numbers in between are always really confusing to me. What are the numbers in between? HB is your standard middle ground, hard, bold, hard uh -huh. black. Uh -huh. And then you have B to one side, 
H to the other. Uh -huh. And then in between HB and H, you yeah. can see F. Okay. F. Throw another that's, letter that's in there. Like, yeah. It usually stands for fine or fine point, which okay. means it will hold a point longer than like an HB pencil. A little, oh, like a little, a little bit, bit harder. harder. Yeah. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about pencils and um, specifically, you know, what makes up the inside core of the pencil and the sort of guide between the different scales on different pencils, mm -hmm. um, it's important to note, as Alex did before, that no two companies have the exact same standard. So that's why Alex wanted to set out to do this HB pencil comparison. And it's not even company specific, it's also pencil specific within the company. So a lot of the pencils that Alex will be comparing in today's video and she did in the blog post are a lot of them are from Mitsubishi Uni, a lot of them are from Tombow, um, but even within those companies, depending on the pencil, like the actual pencil, the way they make that core is different and therefore the actual hardness is going to be a little bit different even though it's technically all HB. Yes. Right? Did I explain that correctly? Perfectly. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. When you are writing with a pencil, what do you want? Definitely, I look for things that don't smudge. I'm a lefty. Okay, never no met, smudging. If you've never met me in store, I will declare that all the time. Uh -huh. Lefty, so I'm used to dragging my hand across a page, mm -hmm. so definitely no smudging. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm writing, definitely something with an eraser on it, mm -hmm. just because I don't want to have to pick up another pencil, like another eraser and manage to remember to have one on me. Mm -hmm. Drawing-wise, that matters a little bit less because I usually have an entire pencil kit with me. Mm -hmm. um, so what are you looking for then when you're drawing? Drawing looking for something still with that harder lead, but that also can lay down graphite very smoothly. Okay, so smoothness, smoothness. Uh -huh. um, is always good in drawing or writing, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, but you want something that can also get a good range of like dark to light within reason for your HB pencil. I draw in a great detail. I look for things that can hold a point for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Don't smudge a lot because I need to not have those smudge lines. Mm -hmm. And then can get really solid, darker swatches mm. and then like a lighter side fairly easily. Okay, so they have like a wide range even within that like HB, HB hardness. Yeah. I see. You are looking at a few things. You're thinking about how a pencil is good for writing versus drawing for you and you're looking at four different um, factors to consider. Um, how something, how a pencil sharpens, its erasability, how it smudges, meaning that you don't want it to smudge, and also <laughs> how smooth it is. Yes. Right? Okay, yes. so those four things are what Alex was considering as she tested these pencils. So what pencils did you test? Tested, we have 11 different pencils. Ooh. And they are all here. Um, she has brought them in. There are some classic standard yellow pencils in here. And yeah, like flashback. exactly. Um, actually, the biggest flashback is this first one, which is the Ticonderoga Black number two. And I am- But this is like fancy one that I didn't have growing up. I was definitely that kid that needed to have the like good pencils, even when they were on your like school sheet. Yeah. Like I couldn't stand the ones that splintered or like didn't erase well. So I would like make my mom buy me the like the good one. Like this is from middle school. I didn't buy a new one. I just like still have it. I still wow. have a bunch of them. So I would rebuy them every year. This is the Mitsubishi Office um, 9850. Yeah. I and love has that like really like classy maroon white. It's so shiny. Yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> what about this one? It's just the 9800, also Mitsubishi. And I do have it in the EW, which is just like the non-coated wood. But I didn't know that was the only difference between this one and the other one, yes. is that this is just the non-coated. Uh -huh. So it's like recycled wood. But so the inside lead core on that case of those two will be the same. And what about this one? This is the 9852. So it's a little bit 
different than the 9850. Obviously, you can see it has that classic yellow Such a classic design. looking pencil. Okay, what about this one? This is the 9000, um, also still Mitsubishi. So there's a lot of Mitsubishi in here yes. because they are really one of the top pencil manufacturers in Japan and like just in the world, really. Okay, then this one. This is the Blackwing Natural. Yeah, oh. so cute. You've clearly used this one up a lot. Yeah. These this are... is extra firm. This is extra firm. Blackwing has its own little kind of scale. Scale where yeah. it goes extra firm, firm, balanced, and then bold or matte. Matte. The they call black. it matte. It's just soft. This is the Tombow 2558. So another classic yellow pencil. Glossy. Very glossy. Next. This is the Blackwing 602. They're kind of standard. The one that you see everywhere. And then okay. we get into, these are drawing, or labeled as drawing pencils. So this is Hi Uni and Tombow Mono 100. Also an HB. This classy black though, I really like. Mm, very cool. And Liberty 9800 HB. Okay. All right, so these are the 11 contenders. So I see here you tested on two different papers. There yeah. is... This is MD paper. The cream colored paper is the MD paper. And then this side is Strathmore 300 drawing paper. Uh-huh. It's kind of like my standard go-to sketch paper. I have like the C MD is extremely smooth. Obviously your drawing paper, you're gonna have a little bit more of a texture to it. It's not extremely textured, like watercolor you can get but it still like has a yeah. tooth and holds kind of the graphite more than anything that was smooth. And then walk us through just like what one of these little squares is. Yeah. It has a little gradient swatch uh -huh. and you'll see that these all kind of look the same, especially like even on a computer screen, but they look the same, very similar here. And it was more so for me personally testing to see like how easy it gets the black darker side to how easy I can get to like the lighter side. Right. And how many times I have to go over to get that dark or in reverse, how hard I have to try to like get that light gradient. I can tell how much light they reflect if the graphite shines. Oh, so if you, you're talking about how like this is like pretty shiny over yes. here. And what does that mean? It really means that you've hit like the top point of how dark it's gonna get mm -hmm. because anything you layer over it is still just gonna become the same. Like that, that's your mass tone. Like it's completely like the paper is not there anymore. Like yes. all just the graphic. And no matter how much you layer back over it, it's going to be the same color, the same shininess, etc. cetera. Oh, so once um, it gets like to that glossiness, you know you've reached it. Yes. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. I so, that. okay. So that swatch of darkness to lightness is just for you to see the extremes that a pencil is capable of. Yeah. Got it. And then we have a little squiggly line here. Yeah. <laughs> this is for my eraser testing. And so I have a little oh, kind of little regular write, writing yeah, yeah. line to see how that erases. And then again, like in mass tone to see how well, if you were drawing or just like, you know, had a really hard line, how well that would erase. Uh -huh. And then on the sides I have pencils, I have both of them. So the first one will be my personal eraser. And then the second one with the star will be the pencils eraser. The pencils eraser. If it comes with one. And yes. not all of them do. Yes. Got so it. That's why there's more than one on some. I see. Okay. And then um, what is this ABC? What did you do here? This is just testing across the line. I was writing, you know, with the side of the point, how well it was writing across, like how smoothly it would write just for me. smoothness. Yeah. That, Definitely was something that came in to even like a broader range on the drawing paper than it did sometimes on MD. And then where would you test smudging? Smudging is the pencil's indicators, although this does have an asterisk because I put the wrong number here. I see, so the number, you wrote the number and then you would just like run yeah, your just, finger over it. Yeah, run my finger along it. Only once. That's cool. I mean, I feel like even here, I can see that there are differences like between like this is like there's no smearing versus here on the 98, 9,000, yeah. there is a little bit of smearing yeah. going on so that you can see kind of right away some differences in certain pencils. 
and what Alex was measuring across all of these different pencils on the two different papers was smoothness, um, the gradation of lightness to darkness, um, the pencil's ability to hold the points, erasability, and smudging. I guess we can share some conclusions, right? I think the winner on smoothness and also just like overall was the 9850. It has its own eraser and it holds a point really well and also just writes so smooth. Yeah. Like, is this the one that says for office? Yeah. Yes, for, for office, office use. use. Which like, what does that really mean? But <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, but it writes so smooth yeah. over MD paper. So if you're looking for a good- As like, advertised, smooth yeah. writing pencil for office use. <laughs> so I'm thinking like, like your printer paper, your copy paper, like something that will write really well. It also, doesn't smudge like almost at all, which huh. is great. Yeah. And it still writes really smooth and also dark enough that it's always like legible and you're not worried about it being like on the lighter side. Yeah. So to have that and also not have it smudge was great. Right, because usually the darker pencils have more graphite, which would be more smearing, right? Yes. Let's see, I'm learning so much. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely would be my pick for a writing pencil if you're looking for a good writing pencil. Okay, so we have a winner. Best writing pencil writing is the pencil. Mitsubishi 9850, although Alex has to also include her Blackwing 602, which is just her long-standing favorite, yes. right? Yeah. You, you go way back with this pencil. And then what about for drawing? What was your favorite before? And then what was your winner overall? Obviously this testing did not include the range of like artist grade drawing pencils that you can get from art stores. Like that is a very large range of other pencils I did not get to. I did have a high uni that was kind of my pick out of my pencil bag, like HB. And to be perfectly honest, I liked the Tombow Mono 100. I liked it better. Personally, given the detail that I like to go into for drawing, I like to have like that, that no smudge will hold a line, mm. hold a point. Yeah, it could be, I feel like it could be very personal for yeah, drawing. Yeah, it's definitely like, a very like yeah. personal More test. More so like, than for writing even, because like everyone yeah. draw, like your artistic style is very different. Like because Alex is doing these very precise drawings where all the details matter so much, she, she wouldn't want any smearing because those details would just go away. Yes, and a lot of people like love to use smudging as a drawing technique for right. softer lines and that's something that like, High Uni might be the pick for you on that case. Right. Okay, so we have the Mono 100 as the best sort of overall pencil for uh, for drawing based on the fact that it doesn't smudge, but the High Uni also very, very good with a little bit more smudging. Yes. But if that's something you're looking for, that might be different for you. What about we had like your best winner overall for uh, erasability, yeah. right? Erasing would still actually be the Tombow 100. Right, and then the other Tombow. And then the Tombow 2858. This one, this guy. I don't know what Tombow does, but both of their pencils erase so well. And the Tombow 2558 had the best pencil top eraser of the standard writing pencils. Mm. That and ironically the uh, Ticonderoga erased oh. pretty well. That was also a lot like of a bolder line, softer lead, which also might lead lead to it erasing better. Okay, but I'd have to say both of the Tombow pencils, like they've got something down. Where on both papers they erased really well for me, even with the pencil eraser itself yeah. and not just my personal eraser. Maybe because they make erasers too. Maybe because they also They're just like, erasers. they really get they erasers. Yeah. <laughs> they get the need to erase. Yeah. <laughs> like it's important to them. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So definitely, definitely both of these. Winners That's for so erasers. cool. Okay, cool. That's great. So we have a winner for erasability, winner for writing, winner for drawing. What about for sharpening? I think that's something that you talked about in the beginning, which is there any one of these that you wanted to like give a shout out for, for like sharpened the best, like the most evenly, I guess? Yeah. So I'd say for sharpening either the 
the 9850 or the 9852. Mm. So what I was really looking for is how well the line of the wood runs into the graphite. Mm. A lot of times, especially with you know your school pencils, you would see where this casing part would kind of separate from yes. the lead. And I mentioned that in a few of the pencils when I sharpened it. And that's not like a horrible problem if that's a pen something that happens to your pencil. And give or take, that's always something that could happen, you know, in quality control. But generally, if it has a smooth gradation to from wood to lead, it just helps reinforce the lead. So you have less chance of the pencil breaking when you are writing or when you're throwing it in your bag. Again, this is the uh, Mitsubishi 9850 for writing. And then Alex's favorite for drawing was the Tombow Mono 100. And then her favorite for erasing was the Tombow, well, Tombow 2558. And then among these three are basically just good overall pencils. Do you have any honorable mentions that you honorable think mention. we should talk about? The 9000 was a very, not very, but a, on the bolder side of all my pencil testings. And uh -huh. I think in the same breath as the high uni, it would be great for drawing if you're someone who likes to like use the smudging for details. Okay. Or use smudging for details. But so you thought it was a bad pencil for writing because it was smudging not all the, over the place. Yeah, not the pencil to pick. I would pick for writing. Ah. Um, it was. Definitely a smudger on MD paper. Okay, so this is the one. <laughs> this is the, the culprit. <laughs> Mitsubishi 9000 for general writing, not for general writing. So sorry. <laughs> Don't use it for writing. And then you're saying something about the Liberty. This is almost the opposite where it says pencil drawing and it had definitely a Harder lead to it. The you other said side. it was scratchy. I remember I you saying it was scratchy, and I don't know those. if that's like the pencil only the pencil I I picked, um, but it definitely had like a harder lead to it in comparison of these HB pencils, mm. and so I just thought it was very ironic that like if I picked it for anything, it would be writing and not drawing in that yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so those are sort of Alex's least favorites. Because she's very the, nice, the so she didn't come out. She didn't the write, honorable come out and mentions in the fact that I was surprised on the results. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's like as as brutal as Alex is gonna get in this in this uh, comparison. I love pencils too much. You love pencils. I would like, you love them all. It's like I'm not gonna get rid of these, even though I like ones over the other ones. Yeah. So here we are. It's okay. Um, they love you back. <laughs> they love you back. Um, okay, so I think that's about it for this video, right? We, I certainly learned a lot about wooden pencils, graphite pencils, whatever you want to call them. Um, and we hope that this video helped you learn a little bit about wooden pencils as well from understanding what is really inside them um, to decoding all the number systems of the hardnesses and what they really mean. Um, in the end, I think as with everything, um, drawing, writing can be a very personal thing. Um, so really think about like what you want to look for when you're writing and drawing. But if you can relate to Alex where you are looking for a pencil that doesn't smear and holds a point and a race as well, um, then we have to say that you should no look no further than these three pencils here between the Mitsubishi 9850, the Tombow Mono 100 and the Tombow 2558. Um, if you can relate to Alex, yes. would you would you agree with what I just said? Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Well, that's about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave us a comment if you are um, if you have similar preferences to pencils as Alex does, and if you learned something interesting about pencils that you didn't know before. Yeah. I'd love to hear anybody else's favorites as well. I'm not opposed to buying more pencils, although I do <laughs> yeah. not need them at all, yeah. but I always want to know. You do always want to know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for watching everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.